Is anyone a natural-born leader? Are great leaders produced or procreated? Find out now the three P's of being or becoming or just being in the corner in the camp of a great leader. I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt because it says like, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party too. Because I like to party, so I like my Jesus to party. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. I like to think of Jesus like with giant eagle's wings yeah. and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with like an angel band. And I'm in the front row and I'm hammered drunk. Hey, Cal, why don't you just shut up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn infant Jesus, don't even know a word yet. Just a little infant, so cuddly, mm. but still omnipotent. And it's time for another unbuckled, bumpy ride with your guide, the stark raving lunatic himself. I'm Jim. Let's jump right in again. Welcome to my podcast based on my brand new book, available on Amazon, Live Life Lean, L-E-A-N. It's a year-long guide to gratitude and our daily grind. The book that combines some timeless wisdom from a whole lot of the world's wiser people with the reflections, reactions, and wisecracks of the guide's author, me. And it guides you, the reader, through the simplest system for a happy, healthy, authentic, and genuinely grateful everyday experience. I urge you to get the book. Of course I do. I wrote it. It's either at Amazon or at my website, ampurage.com. A-M-M-P-U-R-A-G-E. But even without it, let's make next week better than last, our next year better than the past, and get started now with today's episode of... Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. <laughs> Got to be careful about that. What it basically means is that everybody wants to say how things ought to be done, but not enough want to get in and do the work. These days, is it really about too many chiefs, or is it that there are just too few great chiefs, great leaders left to follow? I mean, who were the last truly great leaders that you could point to? That even though not everyone might agree with wanting to follow where they would take them, they were still seen as great leaders. When did they stop making great leaders? Maybe a better question is, when did we stop trying to become great leaders? I mean, honestly, who do you lead? Honestly, who do I lead? Hell, I was born an only child. Who the hell did I ever learn to lead? Maybe it should have been Who the hell did I ever learn to become in order to lead? When I saw the need. The need to lead. Hmm? Maybe that's a better question. Okay, so it's an age-old argument. Are great leaders born or made? And though perhaps our gut reaction is, oh, okay, that's easy. Great leaders are, and then you fill in the blank as far as your perspective. You fill that in with your opinion, your answer. But truth be told, this has actually been studied. It's been dissected and it's been diatribed over again and again and again and there seems to be some consistency in the answer hang on the answer is coming i'll give it to you i wouldn't ask that pop quiz of a question without popping out the proof wouldn't want to necessarily lead you on that way Uh but first what are the three traits that seem universally essential to be a better leader whether you were you know born with them or blessed with them by circumstance or you deliberately built them into your personal brick-and-mortar mentality by choice, however you got them, or believe that you can go get them, these are the three that seem to matter the most universally for being and recognizing a great leader. Number one, problem-solving. Number two, passionate. And number three, plucky. (laughs) Yeah, I said plucky which we'll get into in a minute. But those are the three P's. Problem solving, passionate, and plucky. For now, problem solving. 
A great leader is one who looks for solutions to problems, those that currently face us or those problems that we will someday face if and when we head in that certain direction. And by problem solving, since no one person can do everything, no one person can solve every problem themselves. So the great leader, they seek solutions and they look for those who best fit the science necessary for that solution, for pouncing on that problem. Well, they face challenges, but they don't go it alone. They find fellow problem solvers and then they lead. Number two is passionate. And I don't mean, ooh, baby, baby. Ooh, but, no, not that kind of passionate. But, well, I don't know, maybe. Passionate in the truest sense of the word, passionate. Passionate is an adjective defined as showing or caused by strong feelings or a strong belief. Like expressing passionate pleas for help or for assistance. Yeah, strong feelings, strong belief, and showing those for all to see. Yes, yeah, strong feelings, strong belief, their actions are caused by and motivated by strong feelings and strong belief, literally set into motion by strong feelings and strong belief. That is passionate. First, foremost, steadfast. And that type of passionate pulls others into the problem solving, that problem solving that we already covered before. And finally, plucky is someone who once was covered in feathers until someone came along and took them all away. The definition of plucky. You have the feather plucker, which left them as the plucky. No, no, mother plucker. Not what I'm talking about. No, plucky is a term that describes someone who, quote, is having or showing determined courage in the face of difficulties. It's not enough to be a problem solver if you can't stick with it when the feces hits the fan. And every road to the finish line all seem too far uphill. Passionate people can be intense for a piece now and again, but what happens when things take so long that the passion fires, they begin to become barely embers. They're nowhere near as hot as they once were. This is when plucky kicks in. And those who keep at it, they become what the world calls lucky. Plucky leads to lucky. You know what they say. Always believe in luck. And you will find that the harder you work, the more of it you'll have. I'll say that again. Always believe in luck, and you will find that the harder you work, the more luck you'll have. So problem solving, passionate and plucky, that's what makes great leaders. Are these the only traits and knacks that we need to lead? Are these the only traits, traits that are treated with, that were inbred in people or inborn? No, well, I've seen, I've looked, I've researched, and I've seen lists of lists and lists. I mean, there's like 10 top and 20 top and 30 essential traits for great leaders. And they all seem to fit under one of those three P's. Problem solving, passionate, and plucky. You name it. Lay them out alphabetically if you want to. A, ambitious. B, bold, confident, decisive, extroverted, fierce, generous, honest, incisive, just, kind. Lay them out alphabetically end to end. They all are lacking in leadership potential without having all three of the big three P's. Problem solving, passionate, and plucky. So let's just keep it at these three. Because I don't know about you, but if I'm going to bend time to build traits in myself, it's better for me to focus on a few than a few too many. But now, back to the question, back to the topic at hand. Is this inherited or inhabited? Did the greatest potential leaders show up on earth all prepped and ready to rep? To represent others and lead them when they needed them to be led? Or did they move in a way to where they both saw where they needed to move, move to be in a position, to be in a place to possess those three Ps, and let those three Ps inhabit them, live in them, take over, and take them into a place of leading? Well, answer is, according to, according to psychology today, they say, that to cut to the chase, the answer simply is, great leaders are mostly made. The best estimates offered by research is that leadership is about one-third born and two-thirds built or made. Past studies have shown that effective leadership is about 30% genetic and up to 70% developed. Those percentages were the very premise of a study that was done at the University of Illinois. 
But great leadership recognition crosses even state lines, because when the University of Illinois agrees with the great one out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, you know there's some scientific truth taking place here. Vince Lombardi, who does know a thing or two about winning, since his Green Bay Packers won like five NFL championships, including a couple of Super Bowls, or more. There may be another one coming. Well, he comes down on the side of leaders being made. Lombardi said leaders are made. They are not born. They're made by hard effort, which is the price which all of us pay to achieve any goal that is worthwhile. Perhaps the best single quote I ever heard from a leader about becoming a leader and being a continually better and better leader came from a business CEO, a chief executive officer. CEO Darwin Smith said, I never stopped trying to become qualified for the job. Wow. I, I know I've thought that at times, but it is so simply and succinctly put. Never stop trying to become qualified for the job. This is the mindset that great leaders have. Never stop trying to become qualified for the job. The job you have in your business, in your community, in your family, wherever you are seeing the need to lead. He never stopped trying to become qualified for the job. Say it to yourself again. Never stop trying to become qualified for the job. See, very few of us were born to do a specific job, much less lead others either to do it in our place or to just do it, period. Do it well. In researching this episode, I read that you should always lead with the bad news first. Well, okay, here it comes. Always lead with the bad news first. Please sit down. I have something to tell you. Bad news is you were not born a leader. Honestly, unless your name is Baby Jesus, who were you born to lead? Now, the good news? You were born with the potential to become the type of person who leads better than you used to. Better than all those other lousy leaders that we've all become used to and put up with. The ones that we see out there now who are maybe only in their positions of leadership because someone better poised didn't place themselves in position to partake, to participate, to pick up the problem and solve it, to express the passion that they had that was pressed down and kept inside and let it out, and to demonstrate determined courage in the face of difficulties. Could that be you? Sure could. Why not? It's not like you had to be born into the role for God's sake. Or Jesus' example. So, the question is, do you feel plucky, punk? Well, do ya? Now, more words of wisdom to wow your socks off from the Live Life Lean Guide itself. Entry, page 170. An aim in life is the only fortune worth finding. Robert Louis Stevenson. And the guide's point of view on this? Well, I know a guy who would say, and then sigh afterwards, Aim for nothing, and you'll hit it every time. So what do you think about this? Using the Live Life Lean Guided System recently, what have you learned that's new? What have you earned that wasn't just handed out to you? Where are you adding to the world that isn't just about you? Now reflect on all of this, respect it, be grateful for it, and before you navigate somewhere next, please like, subscribe, and share to show you care. Thank you for listening. I hope you're enjoying your copy of the Live Life Lean, L-E-A-N guide. Enjoying it almost as much as I did creating it. And if you don't have a copy yet, go on over to Ampurage.com or Amazon and get started today experiencing the amazing power of knowing every day is literally yours to be grateful about. And you need never feel unfulfilled again. I'm Jim Hall. And until next time, good health, God bless. And now, go get a little dirty learning something new. Earning what's not given to you, adding to this crazy world that we share, and navigating your way to something new and next.